We're on to collection functions, and these are the most powerful built-in functions, and there's a lot of them. And I made sure to give you an example for each one because I really do want you to know these because this is the power of Terraform. The first on our list here is all true. So returns true if all elements in a given collection are true, or true, uh, or it also returns true if the collection is empty. So it's either true, true, right? Or we have true, false. So because there's a false, it's not going to be true. So any true is very similar, but there only has to be one that is true. So if this is true and there's a false, it's going to be true. If it's blank, it's going to be false, okay? We have chunk list splits a string list into fixed size chunks, returning a list of lists. So uh, here we're telling it to chunk it every two. So grab every two and make them into their own little array or list, I suppose. We have coalesce, takes any number of arguments, returns the first one that isn't null or empty string. If you're used to Postgres, you use this all the time. But the idea is it's going to uh, grab the A. In this case, it'll grab the B because that's blank. In this case, it'll grab the one because that's the first value. We have coalesce list, takes any number of list arguments and returns the first one that isn't empty. So very similar, it's just using lists or if we wanna call them arrays. So the first one is available, so it takes that one. We have compact, so it takes a list of strings and returns a, a new list with an empty string, elements removed. So it's just going to get rid of that space there and we'll get ABC. We have concat, so it takes two or more lists and combines them into a single list, so that's very convenient. We have contains, so it determines whether a given list or set contains a given single value as one of its elements. So does it have an A? Yes, it does. Does it have a D? No, it does not. We have distinct, so it takes a list and returns a new list with any duplicate elements removed. So we just want to make sure we only have one of each. So do we have any duplicates here? We have two A's and two B's. So we're going to end up with just uh, a single list. So only exactly one of each letter. We have element retrieves a single element from a list. So get me the element at, uh, at three here. So, um, Wait, retrieves a single element from a list. Okay, well, that's what it does. You give it a three and it gives you an A. I'm not, I don't know why it's not clicking for me, but I, I'm not following through here. Uh, index finds the element index for a given value in a list. So we say, where is B? And the index of B is is one, because it'd be zero and this would be one. Still really confused about this one. Uh, flatten takes a list and uh, replaces any elements that are are. Uh, lists with a flattened sequence of list content. So basically it says, give me a bunch of arrays or lists, turn into one flat list. Uh, keys, take a map and return a list containing the keys from the map. So we just want the keys A, C, and D. We want length, this is pretty straightforward. So what's the length of this? Zero, this is two, this is one because it's a one uh, map or one thing, key value in there. And if it's a string, it's going to count the characters. So there's five characters. We have lookup. So retrieves the value of a single element from a map given its key. If the given key does not exist, the given default value is returned instead. So we say uh, lookup A, uh, and what we get is a Y, right? Lookup C, and uh, it could not find C. So by default, give us what instead? Key, uh, match keys, construct a new list by taking a subset of elements from one list whose indexes match the corresponding indexes of values in another list. That sounds complicated. Let's read that one more time. So constructs a new list by taking a subset of elements from one list whose indexes match the corresponding index of values in another list. That is confusing. So we have uh, one list and another one. So we have this one here. And we have US West, US East, US East. So we say, okay, we have US East. So th the elements here is two and three. So give us two and three. So that's what it does. That was a, that was a tricky one. I can't think of what you use that for, but that's a interesting function. Merge takes an arbitrary number of maps or objects and returns a single map or object that contains a merged set of elements from all arguments. So it just merges them together. So it's just like concat, or I suppose like flatten. Uh, one takes a list set or tuple values from uh, with either zero or one elements. If the collection is empty, one returns null. Otherwise, one returns the first element. If there are two or more elements, then one will uh, one will return an error. So it returns null in an empty list. It returns the first one, and then here it says invalid function. So it's just saying, is there one? 
right, is one or zero. Uh, ranges generates a list of numbers using a start value, a limit value, and a step value. So we say three and we get zero, one, and two. Um, generates a list of, of numbers using a start value, limit value, and a step value. Okay. Uh, reverse. So takes a sequence and produces, res oh, not reverse, reserve, sorry, reserve, takes a sequence and produces a number, uh, a new sequence of the same length with all the same elements as the given sequence, but in reverse order. Oh, it is reverse. R E reverse. I guess I spelt it wrong here. Sorry. Reverse. One, two, three, three, two, one. Just notice this is a spelling mistake. Okay. Uh, set intersection. So function takes multiple sets and produces a single set uh, containing only the elements that all of the given sets have in common. In other words, it computes the intersection of the sets. Well, that's tiring. So from what I can tell, it's like they all have B, so give us B, right? Set product. Functions find all the possible combinations of elements from all of the given sets by computing the Cartesian product. We're really getting into math here. So uh, we got app one and app two, and so we get uh, development, develop. Okay, so this continues on. So it's going to say, give me app one with development, give me uh, app two with development, then app one with staging, and then app two with staging, and et cetera, et cetera, because that's why I put the three dots there. Set subtract function returns a new set containing the elements from the, a from the first set that are not present in the second set. In, in other words, it computes the uh, relative uh, complement of the first set in the second set. Uh, it lost me there, but it says set subtract. So here I see A, B, and C, A and C minus it, you get B, okay? Set union function takes multiple sets and produces a single set containing the elements from all the given sets. In other words, it computes the union of the sets. So it says set union, so we have a, B, B, C, and D. And in the results, we get D, B, C, A. So I guess um, single set containing the elements from all the given. So yeah, yeah, I guess it's just we get unique ones across the sets. Uh, we have slice. And notice like we're going through all these things. It's like you probably won't use these more exotic ones. So it's not a big deal if we don't nail them here. But it's important that we go through these so that you know you just know all the options are here. So slice extracts some constructive um, consecutive elements from within a list. So here we are saying one and three. So we have B and C. That's where they start. Index one. Um, and then C, extract some consecutive elements from within a list. One comma three. Okay. Sort takes a list of strings and returns a new list with those strings sorted lexographically. So we have E, D, A, and X. And so now they're alphabetical. So A, D, E, and X. Well, I think this is the last one. Uh, sum takes a list of set numbers and returns the sum of those values. That's pretty straightforward. Add them all up. Transpose, take a map of list of strings and swap the key and values to produce a new map a list of strings. So kind of like inverts it. Values takes a map and returns a list containing the values of the map. So we saw this earlier, we got the keys, this is where we just want to get the values. Zip map, so construct a map from a list of keys and a corresponding list of values. So we have A, B, 1, 2, and this turns it into A equal 1, B equals 2. I think I saw this on the exam. So that one you might want to remember. But yeah, that's collection functions. As you can imagine, they're extremely powerful, but they can also be really confusing. So maybe just use them a little bit when you need to, okay?